Hi everyone, and thanks for clicking. In this video, we will be covering all aspects on how to plan and fill a VFR navlog. So without any further ado, let's get started. In order to plan a VFR flight, we need some tools to begin with. First, we need a VFR map, a VFR navlog, a 1 to 500 scale nautical mile ruler, a protractor, and last but not least, some sort of um, navigation computer. This could be a A6B, CRP5, or any other navigation computer that works best for you. In this case, I'll be using the A6B X.com website. And it's my favorite and it's easy to use. Plus, I like the fact that it's free. So first step is to plan your route from origin to your destination. While doing that, there are a few key points to keep in mind, such as restriction areas, beyond gliding range over water operations if you're operating a single engine aircraft, TFRs, altitude restrictions, etc. So make sure you go over the NOTAMs beforehand to familiarize yourself with all restrictions in your route. So in this video, say we're gonna be flying from Doha International, OTBD, up here to Al Hor. OTBK, which is an uncontrolled airfield. So, for the sake of not making this video too long, I will just get to draw my route. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've done with the route. So it's gonna be a short flight, like I said, from the airport all the way to this first checkpoint, Aspire, followed to Sofia, Shaman intersection, and then we fly east to our uh, destination. Well. So second step, now after we have done with the, the route, we start filling out uh, our navlog. So can you note that we usually should start it at the route from the airport region followed by top of climb somewhere here, okay? But for our operations in class D airspace here in Doha, the altitude at which we should exit the zone at is 1,500 feet. And the altitude at which we should rejoin to land in OTBT is 2,000 feet. So there's no point to create a top of climb leg from surface to 1,500 feet. Okay, so first I'm gonna start from the airport, OTBD, to the first checkpoint, which is Aspire. This one right here. And then to Aspire. Sophia would be our second leg, Aspire. Sophia, Sophia, Shaman intersection, and from Shaman intersection to the airport. Shaman to OTP key. For second, we need the MSA or the minimum safe altitude. So if you come here, we are operating in this quadrant and the maximum elevation figure is 1,500 feet. That's the maximum elevation figure. How we get that? This is the maximum elevation here, which is 1,267 foot. We round this to the nearest 100, which is 1,300 and we add 200 feet. Then we get 1,500 as the maximum elevation figure. And the min uh, minimum safe altitude is the maximum elevation figure plus 1,000 feet. So the, so the MSA in this case would be, you guessed it, 2,500 and 2,500 feet. As we cross this quadrant here, and we operate in this area, the maximum elevation figure here is 800 feet. So we add 1,000 feet to this, and we get the minimum safe altitude. And the same here. Now we're gonna get the track, and the altitude, and the indicated airspeed. Let's, stay, let's start sorry, with the indicated airspeed. For the Diamond DA40 we fly, we operate normally at 60% uh, power. So this would gives us 105 indicated. 105, 105, and 105. And then we're gonna get the uh, distances. 
All right, now that we got the checkpoints, the MSA, and the indicated airspeed, we're gonna get the tracks. To do that, we're gonna use the protractor. First, make sure the arrow, the black arrow is pointing upwards, and then put the dot on the first point, waypoint, or the checkpoint, in this case it's the airport. And then we align these black lines with the lines of longitudes. We have one right here. So just make sure it is parallel, perfectly parallel with these lines here. And then we're gonna read. So it's approximately 270. So the first true track is 270. We're gonna do the rest. And then for the second leg from Aspire to Sophia, again, black arrow is pointing upwards. The dot is right above the checkpoint. And then we align these black lines with the long, uh, longitudes. And we read this line, if, we, if it's extended, it's gonna be read approximately 336. 336. We repeat, Sophia. Okay. It's 006. And the last leg from Shamanta section. It would be summer 085. 085. Now, if we move here, we need the wind to get the heading in true. To get the wing, I use the app called Windy. It's uh, straightforward, self explanatory to use, and it's uh, free of charge. However, before we move to the app and find the winds aloft, we need to get our altitudes. For the altitudes, and for especially for this short flight, and in this case here in um, the Qatari AIP, to get out of class D airspace, which is the case here, as you can see, this is, OTBT is a class D airspace, the standard visual departures and arrival, the, the departure is 1,500 feet and the arrival or rejoin is 2,000 feet. So we're just gonna maintain 1,500 feet throughout the flight. One, because it is the uh, regulation and that's what the EIP says. Second, it's just a short flight. It's not gonna be more than 30 minutes so there's no point in climbing uh, higher. And number three, um, if you guys might notice, I am not uh, applying or complying, sorry, with the uh, semicircle or VFR rules, how, because simply the VFR semicircle rule starts from 3000 and above, and below 3000 you can choose any altitude you want. All right, so the altitude is 1500 throughout the flight. Now we're gonna move to the app to get the wind. It's my iPad. And here's the windy.com app. Now, suppose we're in a flying tomorrow, Saturday at eight in the morning. So you're gonna slide this forward, Saturday, eight in the morning, which is five UTC. We come here and we check wind is clicked. 2000 feet. There is no 1,500 feet, so the closest one is 2,000 feet. And then I'm gonna zoom in a little and start. So the first leg is from the airport to Aspire. Aspire is somewhere here, so we're just gonna put it in the middle, just 360 at six knots. And then the second leg is from Aspire to Sofia. Is three five zero at six, and then from Sofia to Shamal is three four zero at six again, 
and then from Shaman to Ahur is 340 at 6. And this is how easy it is to get the wind using the uh, Windy app. All right, gentlemen, after we found the wind, I put them in here, and now we're gonna move to get the distances. For this, we're gonna use this bad boy over here. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, there are two sides. There is this nautical mile one to 500 scale, and this is the another scale still nautical mile one to 250 so we're going to make sure we use the one to 500 um, thousand scale because that's what the map scale is so first it's straightforward to put the zero in one checkpoint so this is five six seven so just move here first leg distance is seven nautical miles Second leg is 10, third leg is 13, and the last leg would be 6. Okay, we have 10, 13, and 6. Now we're going to just go to the, the A6B flight computer if you have. Um, CRP5, A6B, calculator, or any other navigation computer, it doesn't matter. But personally, I'm going to use the uh, sorry, the A6B. It's uh, pretty straightforward and easy to use. All right, here we are on the uh, A6BX.com website or app. I'm just going to use it to get the uh, our magnetic headings, ground speed, and timing, as well as the uh, fuel burn. So, first things first. The true course, or the track, depending on how uh, you're going to pronounce it. First is the uh, 270. And then we have 336. And then 006. And for the last leg would be 0A5. The altitude. Like we said, we're going to be cruising at 1,500 feet throughout. And for the outside air temperature uh, for tomorrow, say it's 15 degrees at 1,500 feet, just for the uh, video purposes. And by the way, the temperature, you can get it from the same app, Windy. It doesn't give you only the winds, it gives you a lot more. Perhaps I'm going to make another video to familiarize you guys more with how to use that Windy app. And for the indicated airspeed, like I said, 60% power on the DA40, it gives us 105 knots indicated. So 105, 105, 105. Again, Normally, we burn, we calculate first leg according to the top of climb calculation. But for this video, I'm just going to avoid making top of descent and top of climbs because there's more to them. And I decided to make another video for them. So stay tuned, guys. So for the true wind, we found in the uh, windy app 3606. Wind speed 6. And then 3506. 3406 and again 340 at 6. Now the true heading is 273, 337, 5, and 082. These are true headings. However, of course, we fly magnetic headings, so we need to correct for variation. The variation here in Qatar is 2.5 east so we're just gonna route it up to 3 and put it here as a negative 3 and this will give us the uh, magnetic heading 270 334 2 and 027 and we just avoid magnetic deviation because we're not flying compass headings 
checkpoint names there's no need for that and for the distance we've already found first like a 7 13 no sorry 10 and then 13 and then 6 nautical mile and here we go our time the first leg is four minutes six minutes 7.6 .6 minutes and then 3.3 .3 minutes for the fuel burn 60 percent power it gives a fuel burn is about 5.1 years gallons per hour so 5.1 5.1 5.1 and 5.1 and we're gonna say gonna take off with full fuel which is 39 gallons and here we are and we're pretty much done we got our total distance total time ground speed magnetic heading as well as the fuel required uh, for every an inch leg so you're just gonna move and put them into the nav lock. Okay, after we have copied all the numbers, we're gonna go ahead and continue filling out the uh, nav lock. As you can see here, the total distance for this flight is 36 nautical mile. In the total time, it will only take us 22 um, minutes. And 1.9 US gallons, I'm gonna round it up to two. And for the fuel management, for taxi and takeoff, our aircraft burns approximately one to two gallons. For safety purposes, we're gonna make it two. And for the in route, it's 1.9, round it up again to two. Contingency is 5% of in route or five minutes holding uh, fuel. In this case, contingency one, just always round up the fuel guys alternate there would be no alternate for this flight and the final reserve would be 30 minutes uh, fuel 60% uh, power 5.1 US gallons that means uh, per hour that means 30 minutes it's gonna be 2.5 so final reserve is 2.5 and those will give us five seven point five and make it eight us gallons to be in the safe side so we need eight us gallons of fuel 22 minutes for a 36 nautical mile flight we already have the all the frequencies here even though much of them we're not going to use but it's better to have them this box is for the ATIS for the departure and arrival ATIS and this box notes you can pretty much write any useful information that you might need during the flight or perhaps some calculation for diversion if it is required and the PIC name aircraft registration and the SSR code or squaw code all right guys pretty much this is it if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments i'll be more than happy to ask and if i missed anything please i stand corrected so feel free